Dino, I guess, uh, how much different is this year, uh, the spring practice? Obviously, the guys were saying a little bit more confident, knowing that you know they, they went to a bowl game, and not only they went to one, but they won a bowl game. And do you, do you see that, that confidence, that the difference this year? You know, I don't know about all that. I do think this was like the best opening practice we've had here at Syracuse. And uh, the energy, uh, the way the guys were moving around and just very familiar with what we wanted, I thought they did an excellent, jo an excellent job, and I thought it was a fantastic opening day. You mentioned, you know, the bowl game, the bowl practices being a way to lead into spring, lead into the 2019. So I guess piggybacking on what you're saying is the best practice. Do you think that kind of played a part where these guys had those extra reps that lead into 2019, where you maybe have that jump start? I think there's good. This is going to be a fabulous senior class. I think the culture is really cementing, and uh, I just think that those guys are. They understand what it takes to be good, and they really want to have an opportunity to be consistent and not occasional. What do you try to see on, on day one, where obviously everybody's just, just getting together for the first time? What do you really try to, to get out of yourself and, and see from the play? You know, the big thing for me on day one is not to treat it like day one. The way I see it is that it's the ending of year three, and it's the start of year four. And uh, we never stop. It's a Rolodex. All you millennials, ask your mom and dad what a Rolodex <laughs> is. We Rolodex this thing, and we just keep going. So I thought that they really picked up where we left off, and I thought they put in a good day of work. How'd some of the, uh, the freshmen like Lee and Mikel look, especially the linebacker before we graduated a lot? Can't even remember those guys. I mean, with, with the other guys out in front of them moving so fast, I can't even pull out a very specific play on them right now. I'll go back and watch the tape, and I'll let you know. What about Tommy? Tommy who? DeVito. <laughs> Tom, Tommy DeVito looked like he had an okay day. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, the proverbial next step good for word. many, is, is obviously, <laughs> to some, maybe the hardest step for a program to make from where you guys were last year to where you're trying to go. You know, obviously win the conference. What would you consider to be a fair assessment of where the program's at right now? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. I'll have a better indication once spring ball is over. You know, we got a lot of things to replace. You're only as good as your offense and defensive line. You're only as good as the biggest guys in your program. We've got some holes we need to fill in, and we had some rough spots and some of the things out there today, but I thought the effort was really good, and as far as the veterans that knew what they were supposed to do, I thought they did a good job. Especially from the offensive line, obviously you got Aaron swatted back at tackle again now. I know that was a thing last spring, too. Do you think you'll see him at tackle or center or both? Or? It goes right back to a spring. All we're trying to do is build position flexibility, so based off of what happens with the rest of the guys, whoever becomes really good, if a, a tackle becomes really good, then we can play him at guard. If, if, a, if the guards come really good, then maybe we can, we can move him out to tackle. So we're just trying to build up flexibility in the offensive line. What kind of goes into that, Coach, where you kind of look at guys and say, maybe we might try this person at a different position in the spring and then maybe switch them back as well? What kind of goes into the mindset of the coaching staff where you guys try to figure that out? You know, our big thing is we just want to be green and growing, not red and rotten. I think we try to stay open to things. I think the more that these young, more positions they play, the more value they have. We were talking about, as a staff, we were talking about Chris Elmore the other day, and they said, well, you know, he's a two-position player. It's really not true. He really plays four positions. He plays three positions on offense and one position on defense, and this is only his third spring, or is this his fourth spring? I can't remember. It seems like he's been here a long time. I think it's his third. <laughs> third. Um, Tommy DeVito was saying he learned so much from Eric last year and the previous two years. Can you place a value on that, on, on not necessarily throwing him into the fire last year and, and being able to learn under you know, somebody as great as Eric Tony? I think there's a lot of advantage, obviously, to sit back and watch somebody. I think you see that in the pros all the time. You know, somebody will draft a quarterback number one and, and then put a veteran in front of him for a year or two to, so he, the veteran can teach him how to be a pro. But I've also seen guys like John Elway come straight out of college and start and tear it up. So there's two ways to do it. I don't think one way is right or the other way is wrong. I just think it depends on uh, do you have the advantage of an Eric Dungy where you can play him instead of just putting somebody like Tommy DeVito straight in. We heard a lot last summer about uh, Eric being in the offense for the third year. And while he doesn't have the game reps, this is Tommy's third season in the offense. How would you assess his you know, understanding or immersion uh, in the system and, and where he's at. I think he. I think there's a lot that he still has to learn as a starting quarterback. He has a lot of knowledge. I thought he looked uh, really smoothed out there today. But I think that the tail, the tail of the tape for him is going to be where is he at when the summer is over. This spring, he's going to accelerate his growth. There's no doubt about it. Then we'll put him in the microwave over the summertime, and let's see what he what he turns into at the start of the season.
What about uh, Trish and Abdul? Obviously, both had really solid performances in the bowl games. What are you looking to see out of them this spring, sort of more incorporating into the They had the very games. limited roles in the bowl <laughs> game, and they haven't ran our entire offense at speed. We've got guys with a lot more knowledge about what we do and how we do it. And the one thing that we can't do in that situation is ever put somebody in that we have to slow down for. Okay, they have to have a lot of ability for us to want to slow down and change the offense. So they need to speed up, learn what we're doing so we can move at the speed that we're supposed to move at. Is that something you hope will be, it'll be there by the end of the spring? I know it's what they hope, <laughs> that they learn it really quickly so we can move fast. I know last year you, you felt good about where you were with your own guys, that you were able to delineate some of your, your time towards looking at the opponents and what they were, how they were scheming against you. Do you get a chance to do that more so this, this offseason now that you have a lot of experience back and, and are you keen in on, say, those first three opponents a little bit more closely? We, have, we haven't really haven't had an opportunity to do it yet. Our recruiting season is a little bit different than maybe some of the other teams that you're mentioning or you're thinking about right now. We're recruiting all the way to the end, you know, to the second recruiting period where a lot of other teams are done. And then when you tie in junior days and all that kind of stuff, we're a little bit behind. We'll make it up. You know, by the, by the time uh, spring ball and before the summer starts, we'll make all that stuff up. But right now, we're a little bit behind in what you're talking about. I'd imagine coming off a bowl win has a positive impact on recruiting. With that said, I guess, how have you kind of seen that uh, flourish when you walk into living rooms and talk to these kids, like you said before, that maybe never would have considered Syracuse, but now are? Man, I think the, fir the first thing is out here at practice. Where you guys, those guys that walk through the gates when, before you guys started your interviews, that was probably one of the best star count that we've ever had at a practice here at Syracuse and it's opening day here and they could be at a lot of places but they're here in Syracuse New York so it's it's obviously different that it's an, an upgrade so to speak in the talent level and now we've got to see how many of those guys that we can get to come over here and be orange two more questions